Hi all. Today I am going to discuss about queues in system Verilog. So before we moving to forward, I hope everyone knows arrays because queues are similar to the arrays only. So if you know the array, queue is very easy to understand. Now we will see what is queue. Okay, a queue is a variable size and ordered collection of elements. So a queue is a variable size and ordered collection of elements. Here the elements are nothing but homogeneous element. What is homogeneous element? The elements of the same data type. It's called homogeneous here. Okay, and like a dynamic array, queues can grow and shrink. Here in queue we have multiple methods, many methods. So by using that, the size of the array can be increased or decreased. And here the queue supports adding and removing elements anywhere. we can add the elements and we can remove the elements or we can access the elements randomly and for any index we can do these things and this is the syntax to write the queue so it is same as single dimensional unpacked array only i hope you know what is packed and unpacked array packed array is nothing but we used to give the dimension before the variable name right packed array and for unpacked array after the variable we will give the dimension This is also same as queue only. In queue, we write the the syntax for the queue is same as unpacked array. Here we will give the data type name and here the queue name. And in the in the square braces, we need to give the dollar symbol. Dollar represents the size of the queue. Okay. If you write the dollar only, it is become it, the array becomes queue. And in queue, we have two types. What are the two types? Bounded queue and unbounded queue. we will see what is bounded queue and unbounded queue and the representation everything we will see bounded queues are nothing but it is size this size is specific or it has a limited number of entries that time it is called as a bounded queue and what is unbounded queue if the size is not specific or it has unlimited entries then it is called the unbounded queue this is the dollar right this if you give the particular size it is becomes the it becomes the bounded queue and the size is not specific that time this as you can see only one dollar is there this is unbounded queue okay now we will see pictorial representation for the bounded queue as you can see in the picture this is bounded queue here the length of the queue is 8 right so you can store eight uh, eight elements here by this is all the these are all the methods push front pop front push back pop back we will see as we progress further Okay, here we can store eight elements. Here the size is specific. That is, it is called a bounded queue. And this one is for unbounded queue. Here the length is not specific. N is there, so N can be anything, right? Not only eight. It can be anything. So here the size is not specific. That is, it, uh, that's why it is called the unbounded queue. Now we will understand what are all the methods available in queues. As you can see in the column like we have nine methods okay what are all those size method insert method delete method push front method push back method pop front pop back and shuffle method this size method is used to give the size of the queue okay if the queue is not empty that time it will return the number of items in the queue otherwise it returns zero if the uh, queue is empty that time it will return zero because size is zero so this size method is used to give the size of the queue and insert method is used to insert the item to an specified index because in insert argument what we are passing index number and item for the particular index what are the value we want to put that will be uh, that we have to add here okay insert index comma item so that for a particular index the item will be stored and delete method here if you here we have two types of delete okay in delete in parenthesis if you give the index number that is that represents it will delete the element for the particular index if you if you don't put any index here it will delete all the elements okay so first one is used to deletes an item at a specified index and the second one delete is used to delete all the elements in the queue here the size becomes zero hmm? then push front method push front of item for push front and push back only you have this type of arguments for uh, all other you don't have anything okay push front item is nothing but it is used to insert an item at the front of the queue 
okay as you can see in the name only as the name suggests push front so front of the queue we need to push the elements so whatever you mention the element here item whatever the item you mentioned in the parenthesis that will always store to the first index or zeroth index of the queue okay push front of item inserts an item at the front of the queue push back method push back method also as the name suggests we are now pushing the elements from the back of the queue okay it inserts an item at the end of the queue here it is not specific like in push front we know that for zeroth index only the element will be stored right here not it, it is not like that in push back hmm? and then push front method sorry pop front method pop pop means what it remove right pop front means it removes and returns the first item of the queue in push front we insert the element to the zeroth index or first index of the queue pop front it removes the element for the first index of the queue it removes and returns the first item of the queue means zeroth index and pop back is similar to push back in push back we push the elements pop back we pop the element removes and returns the last item of the queue and the last one is shuffle method so shuffle method is used to shuffle the items in the queue so it will randomize the uh, not randomize it will shuffle the elements okay the order will be shuffled now we will see examples this is an example how we can declare the queues this is for bounded queue because dollar down to 7 is there that means we can store eight elements in the queue and this is the data type the queue is of int type okay and as you can see in the picture the first row is indices and the second row is elements now i'm calling push print method whenever we call the push print method always the element what you uh, mentioned in the parenthesis that will be stored to the first index of the queue okay first index is nothing but zeroth index it will be stored when it, many times you can call all the times the value always will be stored to the zeroth index of the queue see here so 6 will be added to uh, stored to the zeroth index again i am calling push print of 4 now the 4 will be stored to the zeroth index and whatever the values it had previously that will be shifted to the next index see 6 is shifted to the next index and 4 is moved to zeroth index now i am calling push back of 8 as i said push back method is used to insert an item from the back side of the queue okay so this 8 will be stored to the to uh, second in uh, second index of the queue because push back method it is see here 8 is stored here now i am calling push front method again i am calling push front method that means 11 will be stored to the zeroth index and these elements will be shifted to the next indices see 11 is stored to the zeroth index and all the elements shifted to the next indices now i am calling pop back method pop back method what it will do it will remove the element from the back side of the queue now when i call this pop back method the eight element the third index third index value 8 is removed see 8 is removed now and pop print method again i'm calling pop print method this time this is pop print print means we are removing the element from the front of the queue that means now the value 11 will be deleted or removed now it has only four and six elements so basically this push print or push back method used to uh, increase the size it will increase the size so because we are inserting elements and pop back methods decrease the size because we are removing the elements here i didn't show you a shuffle method and all we will see this in code okay and here as you can see this is one example for bounded queue only this is one case where we can uh, confused so i have given this example to show you so here this is uh, 3 size right the size of the queue is 3 dollar down to 7 0 1 2 means size is 3 this is int type now i am initializing the bounded queue by using the element 7 3 1 okay this is how we have to initialize the elements like i told you right queue is same as arrays only and now i am calling pushback method so this is nothing not different from these things but what is different thing is when our queue size is full this uh, this case will comes okay when uh, my size of the queue is full or elements are filled that time if you call this pushback method that time new element will be discarded so pushback means what we need to insert an element from the back of the queue right but already the queue is full 
so when when the queue is full and you are calling pushback method that new element will be discarded it will not go into store the store into the queue and when we call the push front method so i told you from the beginning beginning only when we call the push front method always the elements will be stored to the zeroth index of the queue no matter what okay so push front method always stores the element to the zeroth index of the queue and the last element will be pushed out so in order to uh, in order to store the first element one element should be pushed out right so the last element will be pushed out and in pushback method the whatever the element we want to insert into the queue that will be discarded here okay this is the one thing you need to understand or you need to remember now advantages we will see as i said queue is flexible so the size can be shrink or grow by using the methods as we know that uh, this uh, pop front uh, pop back push front push back these are the this is for variable size right so size can be variable and here no need of new operator in dynamic array we use this new operator to allocate the memory to the array but here new operator is not required to allocate the storage space for the queue and we can manipulate the queue using various queue methods we just discussed right what are all the methods we are available in queues so by using that methods we can manipulate the queue so we can manipulate in arrays also but what is the difference here randomly we can do this all these things for index we can access we can add we can remove we can do whatever the performance it provides a way to emulate both lipo and fifo behavior that are required in so many order transactions so if the required uh, if it is required ordered transaction that time it is also provides a way to emulate both lipo and fifo behavior this is all about queues so i hope you understand uh, go through once we will discuss the coding example in next session thank you